This is Brock Rydell, consulting geologist of Brixton Metals. I'm here at the Thorn Project and I'm going to be talking a bit about uh, this year's program as well as what we've been doing the last few years. What the, the focus has changed primarily from uh, silver gold, a bit of lead zinc. Increasingly we're interested in the copper potential of the area. I'm here with a couple of um, skeleton core boxes from the current hole, uh, TN THN 19-150, a deep hole testing for the first time, extent of the Oban zone below 400 meters. Went down to about 827 meters in this hole and just finished it up yesterday. Uh, very encouraged by what we're seeing in this hole. There's a fair bit of calcopyrite, in other words, copper sulfide mineral, uh, looking like pretty good grade, um, starting uh, 150 meters down and not really dying off, decreasing with depth, but not really dying off until about 600 uh, meters or so, compared with the, the bottom 200 meters of the hole, uh, looking like decreasing grade. There's also quite a bit of zinc sulfide, sphalerite, a um, bit of lead sulfide, uh, galena, which I can't find here quickly, and all of, most of it occurring in this breccia of, in other words, mixed rock with a number of mixed fragments of both the wall rock, volcanics and sediments, as well as various intrusive porphyry phases, all mixed up and commonly cemented by pulverized rock, quartz, and sulfides of various types. And those kinds of rocks cre create quite a bit of permeability allowing the fluids to come in and concentrate in fairly high grades, such as these rocks that I'm pointing out here. What impresses me about it from working with the geochemistry is the scale of the system. Um, this is not just a silver gold kind of system. This is a very, very large system that seems to be porphyry affinity. The zoning looks like Bingham in terms of its architecture and its scale. I mean, it's kilometers across. Uh, not really sure if there's one or two centers. We think there's very likely a center here at Oban, and very likely a, a center across the creek to the southwest in the Shiva zone. And, uh, but working all that uh, is a complicated process. It takes some time. But we've got a really, really good start on it with the geochemistry. It's going to take more drilling to see exactly if we can define those centers and whether ore grade is there in both of them. Chipas zone, um, most of the work that's been done, there's been really good surface work done by Marco Van Rermitskirken and uh, this year by Jim Oliver. Uh, we got pretty good feeling from the surface, the outline of the intrusion. It's a northwest elongate thing, a, mm, two, three kilometers long, a fairly narrow, a few hundred meters. There are multiple phases of the right kinds of compositions that produce porphyry copper gold systems. Uh, and it's been drilled very, very, uh, very, Incipitly, about 10 holes, those were focused on the gold fringe around the southwest side of the stock. The stock itself has not been drilled. Uh, some peripheral dikes off of it, offshoots off of it, were drilled in hold 149, and they display exactly the kinds of textures that we're looking for, but the pyrite uh, content's a little bit too high. We need to get into the calcopyrite rich zone, which means we need to probably start in the northeast and drill northeast side of the stock, drill through it, towards the southwest, and I think we're gonna hit if we do that. Looked at keyholes from all the zones last year, but didn't get around to looking at Glenfiddich. Uh, that was quite instructive. I looked at a hole, a 121, that was, it's only 108 meters long, but they're 108 meters deep. Uh, it was angled across the main structures, northeast trending structures at Glenfiddich, um, and it hit three zones of good gold uh, or, uh, and or copper mineralization. Uh, one gold with a bit higher up, a thin zone of gold with a bit of lead and zinc. Second one was gold with copper arsenic sulfide minerals, uh, as well as pretty good copper in that one. And the third, the most interesting of the three, um, you could determine its true thickness. It was about two meters of drill thickness, but when you correct for the, the uh, inclination of that vein, it's about 1.1 meters thick of uh, a copper arsenic, mostly copper arsenic mineral called anargite, which you find up in the higher gray or higher portions of things like places like Butte. It looked like it ran, I believe it ran 15% copper over that 1.1 uh, 
uh, one meter through thickness, and that's the kind of things you see high in a system. I'm very encouraged that that might lead us down to something at depth, like you know, deeper parts of Butte, you see exactly that. The other thing I saw is as you go deeper, the higher level veins decrease, and the veins that are more central in porphyry systems, we call A-veins, starting to pick up, which is encouraging. It's only a 108 meter hole, and it does not <laughs> test that area to depth. My name is Sorian Pasesco, I'm VP of production on Brixton Metals. I'm here, standing here today at the Thorn Camp of uh, Brixton's 100% uh, on uh, Thorn project. We just uh, finished up uh, drilling a deep uh, hole at the Oban Breccia. Uh, it went down to 832 meters. Here's a piece of core that uh, shows a semi, semi-massive calcoporite. It, uh, it's taken down to about 150, 58 meters down, down a hole. Uh, you can see calcoporite in, in this piece. It's amazing. Every time we, we, we come come back here and, and drill uh, drill holes, we, we keep finding new stuff and extending uh, the mineralization footprint of the of this, the project. It's an amazing project. has uh, has a very large scale, and we're very excited about it. Obviously, Breccia uh, was the Oban Breccia was uh, one of our, our main targets uh, during the, uh, phase one of uh, exploration at, at the Thorn Camp. Um, we've learned that. The urban breach is, it goes a lot deeper than we originally thought. The immunization goes down to, again, about 600 meters. And uh, I think, uh, I like to think that we're um, getting closer to, to finding the actual porphyry. Well, Chiva Zone, uh, it's a, it's a, a beast on, on its own. Uh, it's, it is a large uh, geochemical anomaly, gold, uh, gold and copper. Uh, also, there's a very large, uh, chargeability anomaly uh, that we've delineated back in 2016. Uh, we drilled a few, a few holes in, in 2017. Uh, it looks like we, we tagged into, into one, of, one of the copper rich, uh, rich zones. Um, this year we, we've done additional uh, field mapping focused on, on structure and, and alteration and uh, also took uh, more, more geochem surface, surface samples. Um, the, the idea for us is to um, Refine, refine them all and, and come back with a, an aggressive drilling program and uh, to the drill test the, the porphyry potential of the Chivas zone. Hi there, my name is Gary Thompson. I'm the chairman and CEO of Brixton Metals Corporation. The company trades on the TSX Venture under the ticker BDB and on the OTCQB under triple BXF. I'm here today to talk a little bit about the uh, recent results on hole 150 at uh, Brixton's wholly owned Thorn project. Uh, we completed a hole down to 829 meters. Um, the significance of the hole was that we uh, extended the uh, Oban mineralization to about 650 meters. Uh, there was a 550 meter interval uh, that was around uh, 2 grams on a gold equivalent basis and including in that uh, was about 136 meters at about 5 grams gold equivalent. Um, so pretty encouraging results. It's polymetallic. It's uh, gold, uh, copper, silver, and, and a little bit of lead zinc. Um, so that's encouraging. It was a well mineralized uh, uh, section of the hole. And even though we cut the, sh the hole short at the bottom uh, because the copper minerals were, were dying off the last couple of hundred meters, but what's interesting is there was about a 40 meter interval right at the very bottom where it looks like it was picking up in gold again. So anomalous gold, uh, 0.15 or something uh, uh, grams gold. So um, it's certainly in interesting. The, um, the objective of the hole was to test for uh, uh, porphyry style mineralization. And the model that we're using, it, at least at this, at this site, was the uh, deposit in the Philippines called the Far Southeast. And um, so we have some similarities uh, to that, that project. It's a uh, high sulfidation system. And uh, they had this diatreme breccia that they were drilling down and ultimately led into a very rich, uh, deep porphyry um, on, on, the, on that project. One of the in important factors about the, the hole is the fact that we saw an increase in mineralized porphyry uh, class within the diatreme. Um, we had seen class previously, but uh, they weren't mineralized. And the fact that we're getting uh, mineralized class in this uh, diatreme is quite encouraging. I think it suggests to us that we are close to, uh, to the porphyry uh, a source. And uh, that's going to mean basically that uh, we're going to need to do more drilling to, uh, 
to actually prove up the, uh, th that there's a porphyry deposit here. But certainly encouraging, some good high grades, some uh, spiky high grade uh, copper numbers, I think up to 5% uh, to uh, copper, and we're getting some good gold numbers. Um, so I encourage you to have a look at the, uh, the release, look at the details, and um, have a look at the website, that's Triple B on the TSX Venture.